I forgot what I was going to say. Hi. Um, steering behaviors. This video is going to, we're going to walk through our first, we're going to make an autonomous agent. It's going to have a steering behavior modeled off of the work of Craig Reynolds, and it's going to be very exciting. So let's take a look. We're going to start with a basic scenario. Let's say we have a vehicle, which is represented by a triangle. This vehicle has a velocity. Also in this vehicle's world is a target, as represented by this plus with a circle around it. This is our target. The behavior we are choosing to simulate is seeking. Remember, Reynolds says there are, each vehicle is going to follow three steps. Action selection, uh, steering, and locomotion. Locomotion is just our physics engine. We've got that. Um, action selection, we are, the action we are selecting is seek this target. So now we need to calculate the steering force. And here we go. We have a formula for that. Steering, and this is like the greatest formula ever written to me. I just love it. It's so beautiful, so simple, and yet so powerful. It's just like a happy formula. I mean, look at that. Desire, steering equals desired minus velocity. I can do that. It's subtraction, right? So we, this is going to be our formula. Steering equals desired minus velocity. Here's the thing. There is something a little more complex at play here, and that is this. Desired, desired, desired velocity. This means... When we go to calculate a steering force, we need to determine what is that vehicle's actual desired velocity. And this can actually be quite a complicated thing to figure out. Fortunately for us, in this scenario, it's not going to be too hard. So let's try to imagine for a second. I desire to seek that target. What is my desired velocity? Let me think about that for a second. Okay, I got it. I just The target's over there. I want to move in the target's direction as fast as possible. So we could represent that as a vector by saying a vector that points from the location towards the target. And what is the length of that vector? It is as fast as possible, or something we're going to call maximum speed or max speed. So one of the things, we're making a new class in our code, in our examples, called vehicle. And again, we're just doing, this is like some strange Sisyphean -like thing we're doing. Like, let's just make the same class over and over and over again. But this is just another mover, another particle, another thing, whatever it is. It's got location, velocity, acceleration. But we're going to add two new parameters to our vehicles. One is maximum speed. And one is, another one is maximum force. So um, this is useful. I mean, there's lots of, the, the, these, these parameters, these values, the, are, we're, are going to allow us to really tweak the behavior of our system. So maximum speed, you can think of it as a top speed, like how fast is this thing able to go? <laughs> is it a race car versus a truck? Same thing, maximum force is like how good, at, how good is it at turning? Um, what's its handling? Like a car racing example is a perfect scenario for this. Hopefully you're thinking of some more creative use. But car racing, we have a car as a maximum speed and, and a handling. That's what these variables are going to control. But this is how we're going to calculate our desired velocity. So once we have our desired velocity, we need to apply a steering force. Now, deep breath and pause for a moment. And stand <laughs> over here and look at it from this direction. We, we did something like this several, many videos back, another time in our life. In fact, several times over, we have looked at attraction behaviors. What is an attraction behavior? It is when an object is attracted to some other object. Or in this case, this thing that's moving is attracted to another location on the screen. So with an attraction behavior, with a gravitational attraction or something you might have found at toxic lips, we could have just stopped there and said, hey, this vector we made up, that's the force that's going to point at the target. I mean, that's the force that's going to be applied to the object. But we're doing something more here. Remember, I really want to write this down. An autonomous, I'm not going to, I'm just going to say it. An autonomous agent has, the, has, has, a, has, a, has an ability to perceive its environment, to know more about its environment than just, um, than, than just sitting there and experiencing a force. In other words, it's able to look at its current velocity as it relates to its desired velocity. And it's able to say, like, what's the error here? What's the difference here? That's the force. It's able to compensate for how far off the path it already is going. I mean, think about it. If your goal is to move as fast as possible to a target over there, and you're already moving as fast as possible to a target over there, why do you need to apply a force to yourself? You don't. If your velocity equals your desired velocity, your steering force has a net steering force of zero. Now, OK, so let's actually take a look at what the force looks like that we're now applying to this vehicle. So let's, let's do this. Um, desired minus velocity. So this is our desired velocity right here. And remember, when you add vectors, you put them end to end. 
So that's desired. And now this is our velocity. If I were adding it, I would put the velocity over here. But to subtract it, I just need to reverse the velocity's direction and uh, put it and, and po point it the other direction. So this is desired minus velocity. And this is the resulting vector that we get. So you can see here that this is the actual force that we're applying, which makes sense. If we're already shooting in this direction, we need to compensate back to steer towards that target. So this is kind of the power of this formula. This formula says, let me look at what it is I want to do. Let me look at it as how I'm currently moving. And let me apply a force to myself, um, which is the difference of those two. So in this scenario, pretty simple stuff. But um, as we're going to see when we start to look at flow field following and path following and flocking behaviors and all these other steering behaviors, how we calculate that desired velocity is going to sometimes get a little bit harder. OK, so um, let's kind of map this out a little bit. Um, let's, write, let's, let's sort of figure out a little bit about how we're going to actually do this in code. Oh, we're at six minutes, which I think is pretty reasonable for a video. We'll just have a few minutes more, perhaps. So I'm going to move the target a little bit closer so I have more space over here. So let's just remind ourselves how this kind of calculation works with code, right? We know we, f we need to get, um, we need to calculate, I erase that. The steering force ultimately is what we want to calculate. But first, we need to calculate that desired velocity so that we can calculate steering. OK, so how do we calculate that desired velocity? First, we just need a vector that points from the location all the way to the target. How do we do that? I'm going to say p vector desired equals p vector dot subtract what? Target minus location. Target minus location. Now, I have a vector that points all the way from here to there. Now I need to make its magnitude maximum speed. This is so easy. Desired dot set magnitude to max speed. Now, behind the scenes, what's happening here is that vector gets normalized and then scaled. Normalized to a length of 1, multiplied by maximum speed to scale to maximum speed. But here we have a, a quick function in the processing p vector class, set the magnitude at maximum speed. Once we have this, now we just need to apply Reynolds' brilliant formula, p vector steering <laughs> equals p vector dot subtract. What do we now want to retract? Desired minus velocity. Once we have that, all we need to do is send that force, the resulting force, through our physics engine. Oh, oh I, forgot a I forgot a step. So this is sending it through the, this is calculating it, this is sending it through the physics engine, but we do want to add one little extra step here. And that little extra step is saying, hey, this is not this perfect vehicle that can just steer however much it needs to steer. That force, that, this force's magnitude is limited. And so what, the step that we're going to add here is say steering dot limit maximum force. So we're putting some limits. If that maximum force is very low, it's kind of like, oh, I'm, a little, I'm really trying to turn. I can't do it. If that maximum force is very high, I can bing, turn on a dime really, really fast. So these variables, as we're going to see in the code example, maximum speed and maximum force are really, really key to tuning how your, how your vehicle is going to behave. All right, so hopefully this scenario makes sense to you. Hopefully you now see how Reynolds' formula is applied, how it is that the crucial thing here is saying this vehicle has a goal that it, it, need, it wants to accomplish, and that goal is translated to a desired velocity vector. Once you have that, you got Reynolds' formula, you got a force, and your vehicle's moving. So let's take a look at how this actually happens in processing. And I'll meet you over at camera two. Is that camera two? I don't know. Maybe that's camera one. There's only two cameras. So I, it's, anyway. Hi. Um, so here we've got the uh, sketch. Excellent. Let's run it. I hope I didn't like screw it up before. Um, no, it seems to be working. So you can see here, I've, oh, oh, except the fact that my head is in front of it. That's something I need to work on here. I'm sure I can improve this. OK, so as I move the mouse around, you can see that this vehicle is moving towards it. You know, it's nothing too thrilling, but it's, it's an implementation of this behavior. What, one thing that's interesting to see is, hey, it's always sort of flying past it, then it has to turn around and come back. This is something we're going to investigate in the next video when we start to look at an arriving behavior, what it means for that vehicle to slow down and stop when it reaches the target, which is something I want to look at, I think, at this point in the next video. Although, if you're looking for an exercise, that might be something you try to implement just on your own. Come up with a scenario for that before you move on. OK. Um, 
So let's look at just a few key things in the code here. Number one is here we have our vehicle class. And you can see what I'm talking about. We've added just a couple variables, maximum speed and maximum force. And not to overemphasize this point, but um, if I make that maximum force really, really large, you can see how this vehicle now is able to just instantly turn. And one of the things that, we're, w that I want to emphasize here is that you, know, you have to ask yourself a question, like, why are you doing this in the first place? Is your goal to have something just move as fast as possible towards a target? If that's your goal, then maybe this kind, then, then maybe you don't need all of this elaborate steering force stuff. You could just like set its velocity headed straight there. The point of what we're doing is to create this kind of lifelike and improvisational movement. And, and the fact that we have these parameters, maximum speed and maximum force, really allows us to have a wide range of possibilities. Are we modeling a cheetah or a turtle or a ant or a uh, Tricycle. I don't know. There's so many possibilities, and how these, how the, how the system behaves, you know, can be can be affected by these parameters. And so, um, yeah. So, um, so that's I think mostly all that I wanted to show you. Oh yeah. Let's just take a look, <laughs> and just prove the point that here we now have a function in our class which receives a target. We make our desired velocity, which is target minus location. I did it in two steps here, normalized and scale by maximum speed. But actually, we can just, as we saw over here, we can simplify that by saying set magnitude. Um, and uh, then we calculate the steering force, the desired minus velocity, limit it to maximum force, and apply it. So this is hopefully a kind of a, a good model. It's a beginning first step. Hopefully, you can understand it, see how it works. You know, your real project here is to come up with your, you know, why are you doing this? What's your, what are you building? Why are the things moving? What are, what are the goals of the elements in your system? And how can you translate those goals into desired velocity? So you might have some creative idea here that you're already ready to explore. Come up with your own way of calculating a desired velocity and then translate that into steering. But if you're looking for an exercise, in the next video, I just said this, we're going to we change the desired velocity so that it slows down, so that it's the closer it is to the target, the smaller it is. That's the arrive behavior, right? When I'm close to the target, I desire to be moving very, very slowly at that point. So see if you can add that actually into this example and get it to slow down and stop at the target. In the next video, I'm going to um, talk through that um, fairly briefly, I think. OK. Um, this is, this, I was recording this whole time, which is good. And soon, you will be watching this, maybe. Um, I, I think. Okay.